Hi YouTube, welcome back to tomorrow's tarot and oracle channel. I noticed a deck on Tracy's Temperance Tarot that really caught my eye and intrigued me, and that is the Victorian Tarot. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I do adore the Victorian era, and I love, love, love the Victorian Romantic Tarot, which I will soon have all the editions to, the first edition arriving sometime later this week, or hopefully by, by next week um, should be here. Exciting. <laughs> uh, so the, the Victorian Tarot is a new deck that was brought out this year in 2018, and it is by Taraco Studio, and it's a pretty nice, uh, well, well put together tuck box in black and white, a little larger than the average tarot size card, and it's quite durable because, well, I mean, it's just got this extra little pocket here for a safe storage to keep it well intact. In fact, it isn't the easiest to kind of slide that little piece back in. So I'm not sure how necessary that was, but it does certainly keep it closed better when it is actually fit into the, the slot. Um, so yeah, so it's the Victorian Tarot, Taraco Studios. I'll show you the little booklet. It's definitely a more pricey tarot deck. This one cost me... $84 Canadian before shipping and all that. I think something like that. So by, by no means is it a cheap deck. It certainly is on the pricier side. It is a very well put together tarot deck in my opinion. When you feel the booklet. So I, I love tactile experiences and I find that one of one of the reasons why I love tarot so much is that it is a tactile experience in itself. I am a sniffer. <laughs> there are a lot of us out there, um, but I, and I also love to just feel it and touch it in my hand and hold the cards and shuffle the cards. And it's just such a pleasurable experience that I'm sure a lot of us can attest to. This book has like almost like an embossed effect. So when you run your fingertips over the booklet, you can kind of feel like almost like raised portions of the paper. So I believe he is the king of swords in this deck. Um, little cherub coming out of the cloud, like like almost like it was off of the judgment card. I'm not sure if this little guy is from the judgment card, but he's certainly holding a trumpet like they typically do on the traditional judgment card in the back. It's, I guess that could like be more of a re representative of the ace of swords. So it's, it's more of an elegant deck. Uh, the black and the white make it more elegant. Um, the card backs most certainly do, and I will show you them in just a moment. It's very simple. It just gets straight to the meanings of each and every card, uh, which I don't mind. So for instance, the fool at zero, new beginning, spontaneity, adventure, innocence, potential faith, uh, fearlessness, a leap of faith, originality, freedom from constraints, purity of action, acting without mal malice. So then it just goes on for each of the major arcanas and minor arcanas, all four suits and that type of thing. And I, what I really like about when it gets to the, the royals or the court cards is that it talks about each one as people, as events, and as the inner process. So aspects of yourself, which I really like because... I believe tarot, I believe these these types of figures, these um, the courts, they do represent either a person, whether they're in your life or coming into your life or have been in your life or, you know, an event that is described as that particular energy and, and also aspects of yourself. So there's definitely different ways to interpret the courts. And that's why I feel like the courts are the hardest among the tarot to learn because they're so complex. There's so there's so many layers and so many different perspectives and things like that. And they each possess their own traits that it's it takes a long time to really get to know it. And I mean, I'm still learning. I mean, I'm fairly confident that I can kind of I get the gist, but there's just so much to it that it's impossible to know everything and 
And that's what's great about collecting different tarot decks is that they give you new perspectives. So it's a great little white book. It's a very well-made little white book, probably the best little white book I have among my collection or certainly one of the best. But I feel like it's definitely up there. The backs of the cards are so pretty, very simple, black and white. Also, if you feel the back, it's got that raised effect, that embossed um, effect that they've done to the cards. And even in the front, they have, I'll just show you, you can't obviously see on camera, but if you've over the title of the card, again, they've done the same type of effect. So it's just those little things that kind of add a little bit of, you know, elegance to it, I'll say. And they really are quite luxuriating, like luxuriating feeling. It's or luxurious feeling. <laughs> they are just really nice to hold in your hand. I have to say, like before you even look at the artwork, it's a very sensual experience, um, a very tactile experience. They are a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful matte cardstock. They are beautiful. They are flexible, but sturdy. And I feel like these will really be durable. They are a little larger than the average uh, tarot size card, as I had mentioned. And that may not appeal to everyone, but I personally think that they are a beautiful size. I love the little filigree, the little accents that they've used in the corners and a little bit along the sides and the borders. Um, you know, it's just little touches like that, little finishing touches that add to it, to its overall appeal. So this is the Victorian era, which of course does not appeal to everyone. It is a bit of a larger size card deck, which may not also appeal to everyone. It is a bit more pricey. And that again, is going to be something to consider if you are interested in purchasing this deck. It's also in black and white, which I was a little bit skeptical on. But when I messaged Tracy commenting on, wow, what a deck, you know, I'm going to have to jump on this. I was sort of a little bit apprehensive because of the fact that it is in black and white. But she assured me that it reads easily. And um, for, for someone like herself who also prefers color and really draws and pulls from that, as most of us, I, I think, do, um, she was pleasantly surprised with its overall impact it had on her. And I have to agree, I just received these. And so I, I haven't had a ton of experience with them. But from the few times I have used them, I have to say they do read quite easily, in my opinion. And also, I feel like it's a very honest deck. It's very honest. And I may not really necessarily always be what you want to hear. But it is going to tell you like it is. That's kind of the the vibe I get from it so far. This is the Four of Wands. It's a very traditional looking deck. It is a bit pious looking. That may not appeal to a lot of people. It doesn't deter for me. Um, it may not be my favorite connotation of that particular card, but it certainly doesn't detract. And I can work with it. Um, but it may not be a favorite among some, especially if you know, they've come from an oppressive religious background and it's something they kind of want to just steer clear of or just something they can't resonate with or just doesn't quite jive with them. But they are they are quite traditional in that respect. Uh, this is the Two of Cups. I find some cards are a little bit dark and murky. Uh, I don't love all the images. See, this one's the Hierophant and it's quite religious looking. Not my favorite, but it is still... You know, it's a very beautiful deck overall. Justice is used as 8 and 11. So you have the option. So strength is the same, 8 and 11. So you have the option of choosing which one you would rather. So if you want, if you, if you prefer the, the Rider weight system or the Marseille, you can decide. Um, there's the Marseille or the, the Thoth or you can decide which one you, you would prefer to go where. I prefer, personally, I prefer strength at eight and justice at 11. I've always thought of justice as balance. So 11, one, one, that to me is balance and strength is eight. I'm just, that's just what I was, kind of. I just learned it that way and what I've gotten used to and prefer. And this is the six of cups. I love the faces. I find that's what I love about the Victorian era. Very sweet looking faces. The knight of coins. 
the King of Cups, the Philosopher, I call him. The Eight of Wands, your typical looking traditional Eight of Wands. So yes, it does follow the Rider Waite system, which I am a fan of. And I'm really happy to have this as part of my collection because I do love that whole Victorian era. The moon, very pretty. Oh, just to touch these cards, I'm telling you, they feel beautiful. Five of coins. They're just a nice feeling, substantial size and, you know, deck. Um, the Page of Cups. I love the Chariot. It's kind of hard to see her. She's, I like her. Okay, there's Justice again, and this time she's a different, okay. Oh, the Hanged Man is quite violent. I even contemplated taking that out of the deck altogether, but I thought, you know what? No, I have to have that in. You have to have the Hanged Man. Maybe it's about, you know, have, being in a really dis, um, uncomfortable position. I mean, I don't know if you can see, but the hook, he's, his skin is hooked onto the hook. And he's hanging from it. Like, that's, I, yeah, it's, it's pretty violent looking, pretty horrific. Not such a fan. But it, again, it's about being in, in a situation where you need to see things from a different perspective and perhaps let go and see beyond and about being in a situation that it's it's now forcing you to really assess things and you know hopefully in turn that will change your circumstance so yeah not my favorite card i'm just going to move along a little bit oh, the four of swords is in the hammock <laughs> And the queen of coins. So pentacles is coins, which I like. I like her. Reminds me of the Regina Tarot. Regina Tarot, which I don't have. I'm not sure if I can find it. I'm, I'm sure you could pretty much find just about any tarot deck if you're willing to pay the price. <laughs> uh, just about. Not not any, but... And uh, I know it wasn't cheap to begin with, Um I think it was just the different variations of Queen Victoria, also done in black and white, which is what essentially put me off in the beginning. But now having this in my collection, I mean, it does sort of broaden your view. And, you know, although I do prefer color, it's nice to have little additions that just change it up a little bit. This is the Empress. So not, you know... My favorite Empress, but I still like it. Three of Coins. The Three of Swords. So some of you may not like the um, superimposed suits. It doesn't bother me. I do like this one. There are a handful that I, I, I really like and, and they Help to kind of solidify me buying this deck. The King of Swords, so he was on the, the front cover, as I had mentioned. Same guy. Very Puss in Boots. <laughs> the Page of Wands, not really how I see the Page of Wands. I look at him as a younger energy, but he's pretty cocky and bold, so not too far from it, I guess, depending on how you see him. Four of Cups. Yeah, the lovers, it's it's a little bit murky and it's nice. They have like a younger pair of lovers and an older generation of lovers. It's a little bit squished, I find. So I wish that one was a little bit easier to see. Oh my God, I fell asleep. I hate it when that happens. The star, it's a bit dark for me. So yeah, I mean, I do have a few kind of discrepancies with some of the cards, but... I like the Five of Wands. It's a little dark, but I really like this playful nature that the Five of Wands in this deck represents. These boys having a good old-fashioned game of, I don't know, some kind of comp competitive game that they are playing amongst themselves. The Ace of Coins, that one makes me a little bit dizzy with all the lines. 
I really like the Three of Cups. I really like that one. Okay, let's just... I really like the Eight of Swords. That's one of my go-to cards in any deck, and I really like this one. I really like the Nine of Swords. It's been shuffled. They just happen to be one after the other. Just keeping an eye on the time. Even though she doesn't look too anxiety-ridden and uh, sleep-deprived, I still quite like it. Um... The Six of Coins is another one I quite like. Show you a few more. The High Priestess, not my favorite interpretation, but I still do like it. Having faith, believing in oneself, finding the answers within, perhaps secrets that may soon be revealed. The Fool, I really like The Fool. Boy with his dog sitting atop a cliff. Okay. I like The Hermit a lot. That's a really nice one. Oh, now my, my foot's slowly starting to wake up and I have pins and needles. King of Coins, I like him. He's really assessing his finances. I like this one, The Five of Swords. Okay, let's see. Kind of stuck together. Hold on a second. I know Tracy from Temperance Tarot really liked this one. The uh, the Queen of Wands. She looks like a very happy, hearty person. Just someone you'd want to have around. Yep, that I showed you on the box on the other side. King, the king, the ace of swords. Oh, I love this one, temperance. It's very pretty. Oh, yes, of course, it's from, okay, yeah, the judgment card. So the little Cupid guy. Is he the same as the one that they've chosen here? Yeah, of course. It's the same. It's from the judgment card. I like the judgment card. Pretty tr traditional, but I do like it. I like the seven of swords. He's stealing an egg from the hawk or whatever bird it is. This cannot end well. <laughs> I like the Queen of Cups. Okay, I think. Oh, I like the Devil card too. I'll show you a couple more. Oh, I really like the Seven of Cups. Okay. And the world. We'll end it there. So that is the Victorian Tarot by Taraco Studios. Came out this year. And, you know, I just received it, but I am enjoying it. So my first impressions overall are pretty good. Some cards I'm not so wild about, um, but I have to say this is a very luxurious feeling deck and oh, I love doing that. Do you guys do that too? Anyway, thank you so much for watching Tomorrow's Tarot and Oracle. If this does appeal to you, take a look. I will link the website down below and you know, it's an acquired taste but certainly one that I'm very ha happy to have as a part of my collection. So thanks so much again for watching and I will see everyone very soon. Take care.